apples? Good, cause here we go. Wash, wash, wash your hands, wash your hands right here. Scrub, scrub, scrub until those germs all disappear. Mask up, mask up, mask up, mask up. Slide away, slide away, slide six feet away. Now kick, now kick, now kick, now kick, now. Keep those germs away, tell COVID not today. Wash, wash, wash your hands, wash your hands, my dear. Scrub, 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 let all those germs just disappear. Arm up, arm up, arm up, arm up. Stop and pray, stop and pray. You gotta stop and pray. Trust him, trust him. Hornets trust in him. Our God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Wash, wash, wash your hands, wash your hands right here. Scrub, scrub, scrub until those germs all disappear. Welcome to Our Lady of Perpetual Help School, the Catholic school of Plaquemines Parish. We are the Hornets and we are open-minded leaders who are positive and honest. We help others reach new experiences through service. From our one-year-olds to our seventh graders, we are grounded in our Catholic faith and traditions. We begin and end our day in prayer. We also pray before and after meals. Every year, we select a gospel value that we discuss in the mornings during our morning prayer assembly. This year's value is trust. One of our monthly scriptural verses is, Come back and quietly trust in me, then you will be strong and secure. We understand in order for us to serve God, we need a strong foundation in academics, extracurricular, social and emotional engagements. Our academic courses are reading, English, math, science, social studies, spelling, language arts, vocabulary, grammar, composition, and religion. We learn some of these subjects through blended learning technologies that incorporate curriculum standards with technology through game-like interactions, workbooks, and teacher guidance. In grades two through seven, we have one-to-one -one school issued Chromebooks. We also like learning through project-based activities. What about the pre-K three hibernating? How long do we have to hibernate for? Six months. Eight months. Eight months. Eight months. Very good. Very last count. And snore. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, it's spring. What happens? <laughs> I like first grade's Jesse tree, where the students make the ornaments. Did you see Roxy, the snake that visited second grade? Fifth grade's project regarding comparisons of ecosystems before and after natural disasters is an eye-opener. The Egyptian museum by the sixth graders had some very interesting sarcophagi. Let's move on to the subjects we all love, such as our twice a week physical education classes. In addition to our recess, as play and teamwork is important. In music class, we study everything from great composers to types of rhythm and musical instruments. out our courses with learning the properties of art and experimenting with 2D and 3D projects. Some of our artwork is displayed at Lakeside Mall during Catholic Schools Week. Our counselor also teaches us social, behavioral, and testing skills. Our small school has big opportunities. This year, we had students place first, second, and third in regional academic fairs across subject areas and grade levels. We understand we are members of the universal church, which means we are made for service. Some of our service activities include making angels for the parish angel tree, canned food drives for those in need, writing letters to our veterans. Service begins at school. Therefore, to better serve our parents, we offer before and after care. Also, homework help is another option available to assist students with understanding their homework. We are an inclusive community. In our high program, 
Students receive a challenging curriculum at their personal academic level as we set benchmarks for their continual achievement and provide them with the extra support they need to succeed. Our parents are an integral part of our school family as well. We choose OLPH because of the home feel of it, the smallness of it, the community. Um, it feels like family. We've been a part of this school and church for 13 years. My oldest son came here. He's a junior in high school now. And I have two little ones that are still attending here. And we just love it. We picked OLPH because this school provided individuality help for our kid. Um, the classes are very small and they help both of my children succeed with the different levels of education you get here. You can have a high student and a low student and both of them feel like they're a part of the organization. As we get to the end of our day, it is time for prayer. But before we pray, I thank our seventh graders, Olivia and Evan, who volunteered to narrate this video and to the students, teachers, parents, and Father Kyle, who agreed to show our Hornet family to you. It is such a blessing to be the principal of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, Bell Chase. Please join us in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear Holy Spirit, we ask you to be with everyone who watches this video. You said, let the children come to me. If it be your will, that they become part of the Hornet Nation. Let their parents know. We ask this through the glory be. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. Our Lady of Perpetual Help, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, Evan, remember our teachers showing us the COVID shuffle? Our Lady of Perpetual Help School. We are the Catholic School of Plaquemines Parish.
We walk by faith and not by sight. No gracious words we hear from him who spoke as none else spoke, but we believe him near. We may not touch his hand or side, nor follow where he trod, but in his promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord and God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Beloved, it is my joy to greet you in this new year, a happy belated New Year to you and a belated Christmas. The season of Christmas is uh, obviously things moving so rapidly. We are in the ordinary time. The color, the liturgical color of the church for ordinary time is the color of green. It's, we call it ordinary time, but there's nothing ordinary about being with Jesus and continuing to grow in the life that Christ has poured into our hearts through his gracious gift of life through his death. His death destroyed our death that we may have life and have it to the full, to have it more abundantly. So we are in this first week of ordinary time. It's a time for growth. It's a time for beginning anew, following Jesus, listening to him, observing him with great intent. In this moment of grace, we present ourselves to the Lord with renewed confidence in his great mercy and love. We acknowledge our sins, our failings, trusting ourselves to him, seeking forgiveness, healing, and peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. All the elders of Israel came in a body to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Now that you are old and your sons do not follow your example, appoint a king over us as other nations have to judge us. Samuel was displeased when they asked for a king to judge them. He prayed to the Lord, however, who said in answer, Grant the people's every request. It is not you they reject. They are rejecting me as their king. Samuel delivered the message of the Lord in full to those who were asking him for a king. He told them, The rights of the king who will rule you will be as follows. He will take your sons and assign them to his chariots and horses, and they will run before his chariot. He will also appoint from among them his commanders of groups of a thousand and of a hundred soldiers. He will set them to do his plowing and his harvesting, and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. 
He will use your daughters as ointment makers, as cooks, and as bakers. He will take the best of your fields, vineyards, olive gardens, and give them to his officials. He will tithe your crops and your vineyards and give the revenue to his eunuchs and his slaves. He will take your male and female servants as well as your best oxen and your asses and use them to do his work. He will tithe your flocks and you yourselves will become his slaves. When this takes place, you will complain against the king whom you have chosen but on that day the Lord will not answer you. The people, however, refused to listen to Samuel's warning and said, Not so! There must be a king over us. We too must be like other nations, with a king to rule us and to lead us in warfare and fight our battles. When Samuel had listened to all the people had to say, he repeated it to the Lord, who then said to him, Grant their request and appoint a king to rule them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. Blessed the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. For you are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongs our shield, and to the Holy One of Israel, our King. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. 
When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it became known that he was at home. Many gathered together so that there was no longer room for them, not even around the door, and he preached the word to them. They came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men, unable to get him get near Jesus because of the crowd. They opened up the roof above him. After they had broken through, they let down the mat on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to him, Child, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there asking themselves, Why does this man speak that way? He is blaspheming. Who but God alone can forgive sins? Jesus immediately knew in his mind what they were thinking to themselves. So he said, Why are you thinking such things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise, pick up your mat, and walk but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins on earth. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your mat, and go home. He rose, picked up his mat at once, and went away in the sight of everyone. They were all astounded and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beloved, as we have entered into a new calendar year, as well as a new liturgical year, the liturgical year began actually in the season of Advent, which gave way to Christmas, and Christmas, of course, returns us now to the season of ordinary time. But as we have now returned to the time to grow in relationship to Jesus, as he's continuing to present himself publicly in the region of the Galilee by the sea, Capernaum. He's taken up residence in the house of Simon Peter. And throughout this week, as we've been journeying with the Lord, it started with Jesus in the synagogue teaching. A man with an unclean spirit is there. Jesus commands and rebukes the demon and casts him out of the man. And the people are amazed at his teaching and not just that he's teaching, but that he's teaching with an authority unlike anything they have experienced before. And so following that scene, Jesus then enters the house of Simon Peter. He's told about Simon Peter's mother-in-law, who's stricken with a fever. And this is on the Sabbath. He has finished his teaching in the synagogue. He enters in, and with that notification, Jesus approaches the mother-in-law of Simon Peter, clasps her by the hand, and raises her up, and immediately, the gospel says, the fever departed from her. And she attended to their needs, served them, and so forth. Well, you can imagine some of the people who were in the synagogue were also following Jesus into the house of Simon Peter. And once such a sign was realized, by sunset, all of the people in the village in the area came with their sick. Many who were afflicted with many different types of things and diseases, and many who were possessed by demons. We're told, the gospel says, Jesus attended to all of them and healed them all. And once that was done, Jesus took time to go off to pray in solitude. He, he wanted to renew himself and his relationship with his father. And they come looking for him. Hey, where are you? Everybody was looking for you. Where, this, 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 where are you at? He says, let us go. I must go now to the neighboring villages and continue to preach this gospel. As they were on the way, they encountered a leper. 
a man stricken with leprosy, and he falls to the knees of Jesus on his knees. He says, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Jesus, looking at him with compassion, moved with pity, touches the leper and says, I do will it be made clean. So, and he also sternly warned him not to publicize this. Don't make it known. Go pres- give what's prescribed by the Mosaic law to the priest and show yourself. That shall be proof for them. But what does this guy do? He goes off blasting about it and everybody finds out to the point there where Jesus can no longer go around openly. He has to stay on the outskirts in the wilderness. He and the leper, <laughs> ironically, change positions. The leper can now move around freely and Jesus has to take the place of the leper on the outskirts of the towns. Well, now having gone through that, Jesus has returned to the house of Simon Peter in Capernaum. And what is the scene that we're presented with? Well, the crowd is so immense as they are hanging on his teaching. He's preaching the word. There are four people who bring with them a paralytic and they can't get through. But what do they do? They climb up on top of the roof, open up, tear open the roof and lay down the mat that the man is on before Jesus. Jesus is impressed with their faith, this gospel says, and then speaks directly to the paralytic, my child, your sins are forgiven. Well, this causes a bit of a scandal in the hearts of the scribes that are there, the Pharisees that are there, and they are thinking within themselves, how is this man speaking like this? He commits blasphemy, only God can forgive sins. Jesus, we are told, immediately aware in his mind what they were thinking to themselves, speaks. And this is where the gospel wants us to focus our attention. He speaks to them and he says, now, which is easier to say to this paralytic? Your sins are forgiven or to say, rise, take up your mat and go home. That you might know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins. He says, I command you. Rise, take up your mat, and go home. And the man rose, took up his mat, and went outside in the sight of everyone, to the point that they were astounded, all praising and glorifying God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Now let us pay attention to how Jesus affects this healing, this miracle. First of all, He doesn't begin by saying to this guy, well, first of all, he takes him by the hand and he says, rise. He tells him, he commands him, rise, as in the resurrection. It's the same term used for the resurrection, for the term of the resurrection. Rise. Take up your mat and walk. Go home. So, as Jesus is effecting this miracle, notice he doesn't say, See if you can move your toes. See if you can stretch out your leg and and, uh, uh, this and that. No, Jesus doesn't say any of that. Jesus commands this man to rise, take up his mat. He commands him to do what's impossible for him to do. So what's first of all necessary for this man to be obedient to such a word? A word which Jesus wants you and I to recognize is not just a spoken word, but a word that effects what he wills to be done. And so the first thing that has to be in place for this paralytic, he must believe that Jesus can forgive his sins. He must trust that Jesus has the power to forgive his sins which evidently he does, because as Jesus commands him, the man is obedient in faith. He's obedient to this command to get up, to rise up. And he does exactly what Jesus tells him to do, and he proceeds to move out. Now this is a lesson for us. How many of us are paralyzed by a particular issue that we contend with in, with our lives? Maybe we struggle with overeating, overdrinking. Maybe we have a trouble controlling our tongue, particularly when it comes to saying those colorful words, known as curse words, vulgar terms. Maybe we have a hot temper, and we, and, and, but we were, we're, at, we're at a stage in our lives where we just have, we're, 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 we've, we've, we've like, we've, we feel defeated. It's no use. I can't break it. 
I try and I try and I try, but I just cannot break the habit of eating too much or cursing from time to time or whatever it might be. My tendency to being angry, losing my temper with people, my patience. I, I'm just, it's no use. Well, Jesus is speaking to you and I today. Whatever our issue is, and he's saying, rise up. Rise up. Take up your position and move with me. Let us go. What has to be there for you and I? We must truly believe in his word. That he can forgive, not only forgive us, but that he can heal us. And in order for that healing to take place, I must be willing to step out in faith, in obedience to that word, and act. And once that happens, the healing is realized and a new reality is manifested, is revealed. We're moving with Jesus in obedience. So this is a progression we find. Faith, trust in the word of God leads to obedience. Obedience to the word of God. Obedience to the word, to the command of God leads to healing. So many people approach Jesus in the sacrament of reconciliation or confession and they merely, sometimes they say, Father, forgive me. I, I want, I, this is what I've done. I want to be able to receive communion to that mass. I want to be able to receive communion. And Jesus, you know, he grants that, okay? That's a, he'll grant that request. But it, it really does, it, it really does weigh heavy on the heart of God, on the heart of Jesus. Because the sacrament of reconciliation or penance or confession, however you know it as to be referred to it, it's a sacrament of healing. He doesn't want you. We settle. We, 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 so often we settle just for the minimum. And he wants us to have it all. He wants us to walk with him, to talk with him in fullness of life, not just with a little bit here and a little bit there, everything. But so often we look at our situation and we say, you know what, I know I'm a, I, 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 I am who I am. I, I, you know, I'm like everybody else, Father, I tend to curse and this and that. But you know, today I want to be able to receive Jesus in communion. Can you just give me, forgive my sins, Lord. Let us pay attention to the paralytic. Let us pay attention to the four friends that brought the paralytic to Jesus. Look at what they were willing to risk. They were willing to risk their lives. How, God only knows how high the roof was of that house. They climbed up to the roof and opened it up. They weren't afraid. And no, no telling. You know people must have been criticizing them. What are you doing, you lunatics? What are you doing? Don't you realize? They didn't care. They broke open the roof. Somebody had to offer restitution for the repair of the roof. They were willing. Money wasn't an object for them either. They didn't care. They were going to take care of that. Their objective was to bring their friend to Jesus. Such was their faith. And Jesus took note of that. You and I have the ability, in our faithful witness, we have the ability to let God use our faith and our witness to him to heal other people, to forgive other people of their sins. Because that was the first word Jesus spoke to this man. My child, your sins are forgiven on the basis of the faith of these friends and their willingness, their willingness to embrace and make the sacrifices and to suffer what they had to suffer to get him to Jesus. You and I have the same ability. This is the reality of the gospel that Jesus is revealing to the world. He's not just teaching us. He's revealing. He's showing. And he wants us to respond with faith. Trust in my word. Say yes to me. Believe. Faith leads to obedience and obedience to healing. This is our message today. Hear the word of Jesus today and make the decision to leave behind, to rise up out of whatever has been holding you back and move with him in faith, in obedience, and allow this new creation to unfold in this ordinary time, which is most extraordinary because we are doing it with him. God love you.
Blessed are you, Lord, the God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, beloved, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly, says the Lord. Beloved, for those of you who are joining me via the live stream on YouTube, be it at Riverbend Nursing Home or elsewhere, who are not in a position to receive Jesus in the most blessed sacrament of the altar, I invite you to pray with me the words of the Anima Christi. It's one of the formal prayers of the church that allow us to spiritually commune with Jesus when circumstances are beyond our control, when it's quote-unquote impossible for us to be physically present to the Lord in whatever way we would like, but affords Jesus to effect what he wills. He wills that all of us experience this abundant life through him. And so, As we pray these words of this prayer, pray them with absolute faith that he is able to do and effect what he desires with his word of command as we seek his healing in prayer. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to thee that with thy saints and angels I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. 
Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Alleluia. Amen. 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 I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white, the bright blessed day, the dark sacred night, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Beloved, it has been a while since we've had the opportunity to be together. I've longed for this time, and you could say maybe Father got a little carried away in preaching, going a little longer than usual. But you know what? You're worth it. You're worth it all to me, but more importantly to the one who sent me. Let us continue to rejoice in his mercy and love as we listen attentively to the words of this song. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry, I really do. I watch them grow, they'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world, yes I think to myself, what a wonderful world, oh Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.